Hello and welcome back to How to Build an AI, the Chronicles of Jobot. In this course, we are building Jobot, an AI, an artificial intelligence agent, powered by a bunch of different state-of-the-art ML models and APIs. And so far, we've given Jobot some intelligence using GPT 3.5 or GPT 4. And we've also built a web application but today we are going to focus on giving Jobot some skills and we are going to do this by creating some prompts and prompt templates. Uh, and then of course, over the next few episodes, we are going to give it the ability to, uh, ability to hear, to speak, to remember things, to get creative, design things, and also to be able to see. Okay. So let's get into episode three, Jobot learns new tricks. Now, uh, here's what we are going to look at today. So if you open jobot.dev, uh, and if you were following along, you will notice a difference from the previous lesson. Now, jobot.dev opens up to this page where not only do you have this input box over here where you can ask anything, but you also have a bunch of skills that Jobot has uh, has already learned. So there is Jobot can serve as a lead code assistant, a coding a programming assistant. Jobot can serve as a mock interviewer. Jobot can work as a code explainer. You can give it some code and it can explain it to you. Jobot can become a code error debugger, a quiz master, a personal tutor, cover letter generator, email generator, etc. All right. And today, what we're going to do is we're first going to look at how these skills work. Uh, then we're going to look at how to give new skills to Jobot. And then finally, we're going to do a walkthrough of the code as well. So we're taking a slightly different approach today. The code has already been written and you can already play with this at jobot.dev. And uh, we will go into all the details eventually. But what I want you to focus on more is uh, how to train these skills and what it means, how to extract maximum uh, use, how to extract maximum value from uh, an AI like Jobot. Okay, so first things first, uh, the last time we had created something uh, which simply had this one input box. So you could say, I, who are you? And Jobot would respond saying, hello, I'm Jobot, a helpful AI, etc. And you could say, uh, you could ask it a question related to programming. So let's say you could ask how to print hello world in JavaScript. And it would simply give you uh, some code and that way you can have conversations with it. Now, of course, the trouble is when you are just looking at an empty input box, you may not be able to come up with the right message to get what you want from Jobot. For example, you have some code Let's go in here and let's maybe look at some code from Jobot's uh, source code. And by the way, Jobot is completely open source. So you can check out its entire source code here. And let's grab some code from maybe Jobot web, SRC, pages, index.js. All right, so let's say I want to understand some code. Um, then you can just take that code here and you could ask Jobot, explain this code to me. Um, but it may not do a great job. Uh, you may not get exactly what you're looking for, or you could come into one of these skills. And this is a skill that we have taught Jobot. And here you can enter that you have some code in JavaScript and react. And you can just paste in your code here and start conversation. And Jobot is going to then tell you that this code, uh, it's going to give you an overview saying that it renders a conditional JSX snippet. And then it's going to give you a detailed explanation line by line. All right. And it's able to do that. Not, um, not because if you just dropped in the code into the normal input box, it would not be able to do that. And I'll show you that in a second. So let's see if I just paste it in here. And if I just said, uh, explain this. Jobot would not do an equally great job. Uh, it would still have some explanation, but this mode, this would not be exactly what you're looking for. All right. Well, in this case, it actually seems to do a pretty good job. So similarly, uh, there are a bunch of other things that we have optimized or trained Jobot on. Here is another example, uh, quiz master. So let's say you want to ask, a, you want to prepare for a machine learning interview. So you want to say that you want to prepare, practice some medium level questions on machine learning. And uh, you can just put in that information. You can say start, uh, start asking questions. And it's going to ask you questions like, what is the purpose of k-fold cross validation? And I could say maybe my answer is B. And it says, sorry, that is incorrect. The purpose is to reduce overfitting. Would you like to try a new question? I would say yes. And this time it would give me a new question and so on. All right. 
So now this kind of a behavior where it is um, asking you a question and then based on your response, it is going to then give you a new question. This is something that again is something that you have to train Jobot to be able to do. So that is also something that we're going to look at today. Okay, let's look at one last example. Let's look at maybe, um, let's see. Yeah, so let's look at a uh, YouTube short script generator. So once again, let's say you're planning to do a short video, one minute video. Let's say a video announcing Jobot. Um, open source AI developed by Jovian using state of the art models and um, has many abilities like vision, hearing, text, etc., and many skills. Check it out at jobot.dev. Okay. Now, once again, this particular skill has been optimized to create an engaging YouTube short video. So first it's going to give you a bunch of title ideas, um, like introducing Jobot, welcome Jobot, meet Jobot, and then it's going to give you a script. Hello everyone. Welcome to our latest YouTube short today. We're excited to announce the release of Jobot, a powerful open source artificial intelligence. This is a smart assistant is etc. etc. So it's got a bunch of things that it understands. All right. So what I'm trying to get at here is you will not be able to get such a great answer simply by putting in this input video description. You also have to give Jobot something called a system prompt and that system prompting is what we are going to learn today. And we're going to see how it is implemented within Jobot.dev. Okay. So let's take an example of a particular specific, um, yeah, let's take an example of quiz master and let's see how the quiz master skill was developed. Okay, so let me go into the source code for Jobot. So here is the source code for Jobot. It is at github.com slash jovinhq slash Jobot. And I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to open up this source code in a GitHub code space. So let's open up GitHub code spaces here. And it's going to take a second to load up. Now all the skills that you see here, there are about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 skills. Uh, all these skills are actually part of the GitHub repository itself for now. We could also load them from a database. We could also give users the ability to use these skills. Um, so let's for now, just keep it simple. We're not going to use the database for now. So all these skills are currently part of the repository itself. Now in the Jobot repository, let me zoom in here a bit. So in the Jobot repository, you will find a folder called templates. And in the templates, you will in the templates folder, you will find one folder for every skill. Okay. And then you're going to find this for this file called index.json. This contains some information about each skill. And that is the information that is shown here. So when I open Jobot.dev and I click on Let's see, I click on quiz master. You can see that it has this title quiz master. It is at this URL slash quiz master and it has this uh, description about it and it has two inputs. It has a topic and a difficulty level. Okay. So let's first start by looking at the quiz master folder inside templates, uh, inside the templates folder and inside the quiz master folder, we have two things. We have a file called system.md and the system.md is a, what's called a system prompt. So if you remember, if you recall properly, we had created a system prompt or a system message that is that that had informed Jobot that its name is Jobot and it is developed by Jovian using state of the art APIs. So it, you cannot, apart from just telling the assistant or the chatbot who it is, you can also give it a bunch of instructions. So let's say uh, here the instruction says you are an assistant that helps users test their understanding of a topic by asking them multiple choice questions. The topic and the difficulty level will be given to you and you should reply with a single multiple choice question. The user will then reply with the answer, which could be a single character indicating the selected option or the full answer. If the answer is incorrect, simply mention that the answer is incorrect and ask the user to try again. Don't reveal the correct answer or don't provide any explanation before the user has answered correctly. So we're giving Jobot very detailed, very uh, specific instructions. 
And if the answer is correct, let the user know that the answer is correct and provide a brief explanation and let them ask and then ask a new multiple choice question related to the same topic and repeat the process. Never ask the same question twice, adjust questions difficulty based on the provided difficulty level. Okay, so this is the system prompt. So this is what we are sending to Jobot behind the scenes. And then apart from that, there is also a user prompt. Now the user prompt is going to contain a topic. So the user is user is going to select a topic and a difficulty level. Now um, the topic that the user is going to select, we are going to insert it here. So this is basically a way for us to insert a value into this user prompt and we'll see how this value actually gets inserted. But basically what we're doing is we're creating this prompt or this message with a bunch of boxes within it. And these boxes will get filled in by the data that the user provides, right? So the user provides a topic over here and this topic once they provide and hit start conversation will be added here. And then the difficulty level that they select will be selected here. And then both the system prompt and the user prompt together along with uh, together uh, will be sent to the uh, Jobot API, which is essentially going to call the chat GPT API and the chat GPT API is going to return a response and that response is been going to be shown to the user. And you can see, uh, you can see an example here. So let's say I want to learn, I want to practice Python programming. I want medium level questions. I click start conversation. So you can see that from the user's end, the message sent is topic Python and difficulty level medium. Now, however, we are not displaying system messages, but if we are displaying system messages, you would see that from the system, uh, along with the user message, we've included a system message. And that system message is basically uh, this message that you see over here. Hence, both these messages combined tell Jobot exactly what needs to be done. And then Jobot goes ahead and asks a question like uh, that. And I can just provide an answer. And then it says whether that is correct or incorrect and it repeats the question for me and I can keep going like that. Okay. So that is the basic idea. We take a, let me just show that over here as well. Oops. All right. Never mind. So that is the basic idea. We take a system prompt, we take a user prompt, we insert some inputs into a user prompt and then send both of those to the API and the conversation kicks off from there. Okay. So that's basically how you uh, give Jobot a skill. And by the way, this, this process of writing a set of instructions that can then be given to your chatbot, this is called prompt engineering. So if you just search for, or maybe we can just ask Jobot, what is prompt engineering? Right. So if you can, if you just search for prompt engineering, you can basically see that this is a well, well understood technique now that is used in machine learning and natural language processing to create good prompts that guide the generation of text from a language model. These prompts are carefully crafted text inputs and uh, they output a certain type of responses. So it's different from traditional machine learning approaches, traditional machine learning approaches, you actually train a model on new data. But the new machine learning approach that works with large language models and APIs does not involve training, but simply involves prompting the model. So just giving it some instructions that it can follow. Okay. And there, uh, there are many online databases of prompts. But if you want to learn prompt engineering for yourself, you can just search for this website called learn prompting. Yeah, so there is this website called learnprompting.org. And on this website, you can find a bunch of tutorials on creating prompts. For example, let's say you uh, there are some intermediate level, uh, some basic applications, let's say writing a blog. So here, what if you could write a blog in five seconds? Well, you can't but an AI can significantly re reduce the time. Now, uh, here are some prompts that you can use for actually working with uh, an AI and creating a blog. So write an outline for a short blog post about why Christmas since uh, Christmas cacti are great buy. And then here are products which attempt to do this. So this basically this piece of it is the um, yeah, this piece of it is the initial prompt that you give. And you can just modify here Christmas cacti to something else. And then you go in and then it, it's going to give you an output. And then it says that's a great outline, Let, condense it to the main points, it's going to do something, then it says something else, then it says something else. Okay. So typically, what you would do is you would you would go to one of these prompting websites, you would copy a prompt, you would go paste that into chat GPT or elsewhere. But it would be nice for us to actually be able to just create simple user interfaces on top of this. And uh, that is what uh, and that is what we have created the template system within Jobot to do. Okay. Now, how exactly does Jobot 
show you this user interface. When you click on Quizmaster, how exactly does it know that it needs to show you the topic and a drop down for difficulty level? Well, that is something that we have defined here inside this templates folder. We have this file index.json. Now in this file index.json, we have a list of all the templates or all the skills that Jobot has. And each of these skills um, has a bunch of information related to it. So let me scroll down to the skill that is called Quizmaster. So you can see that this is just a JSON file and it is a list of uh, objects, a JSON objects. And this particular object called Quizmaster, it has the slug Quizmaster and the slug is used to decide what is the URL at which this skill shows up or this template shows up. Then it has the title Quizmaster. This title is what shows up over here at the top of the page. Then it has a description. So this description is what shows up uh, right below the title. Uh, then it has an icon URL. So this is just this, this URL over here, which opens up this icon. And that icon essentially is uh, the icon that you see here on this page, Quizmaster. Apart from that, it has this key thing, which is the inputs. Okay. So it has two inputs. So we've defined that in our quiz master template, there are two inputs. There is one input called topic, uh, which has a title topic. It is of the type text and it has a placeholder, which is the text that is shown here in the input box. And the other input is, uh, and, and, and that resolves to the field topic. Now, what, what does this field exactly correspond to? If you see here, if we come back into quiz master and open the user prompt, What's going to happen is using these inputs, using this information, we're going to generate a form. And when that form is submitted, we're going to pick the field topic and we're going to insert that into the uh, variable topic inside the user prompt. Similarly, we have a second field. This field is called difficulty. It shows the title difficulty level. And this time it's a select, which means it's a drop down, and it has a bunch of options, easy, medium, hard, very hard. And then that difficulty is going to get added into the user prompt before it is sent to Jobot. All right. So we've done, uh, we look at the code of how exactly this is implemented, but what I want you to get at, what I want to get at is that what we are doing here is we are defining just a bunch of basic metadata and a bunch of uh, basic prompts that can then be presented to the user as a simple to use UI for a particular use case. And behind the scenes, we're going to take the system prompt, insert this data into the user prompt and send it to Jobot and start a conversation. Okay. So that is one example. And I would encourage you to maybe check out other examples as well. Here is the mock interviewer. So again, if you just asked Jobot, for example, if you just asked it that conduct a mock interview for a data analyst role, it wouldn't do a great job. Uh, it would basically just ask you a bunch of questions all at once. That is not what we want. So what we have done in the mock interview template is uh, in the system prompt, we've said, I wanted to act as a interviewer, the user will be the candidate and you will ask the user interview questions for the given position. I want you to only reply as the interviewer, do not write all the all the questions at once. Um, yeah, do not write all the questions at once. I want you to only do the interview with me. Um, ask the questions and wait for the user's answers. Do not write explanations, ask the user one by one, etc. All of that, right? So after asking the user that after providing that particular prompt, if we go into mock interview, and then we say, uh, then we say, okay, interview me for a data analyst role, and click start conversation. Now it says, okay, can you start by telling me about your can you start me start by telling me about your experience as a data analyst? Yeah, so I have two years of experience working with Anders, NumPy, and scikit-learn. Okay, and then it'll ask the next question. What is your experience with data visualization? So it knows exactly, it knows everything, but you just have to give it the right prompt. And of course the user prompt here just is simply the position that the user is interviewing for. Okay, so those are some, uh, that's sort of a basic introduction to prompt engineering. And I really encourage you to check out uh, learnprompting.com and look at a bunch of things. Chain of thought prompting is especially very powerful. So where you can give it a bunch of, uh, you can give it a bunch of things here and then give it an explanation. So here's a question. Then after this question, there is an explanation. And then here is a second question. 
and that question it will try to answer in the exact same way as the second uh, uh, as the first question right so you can give it an example of how you would like it to think or how you would like it to generate text and it's going to generate text in that particular order okay so that's how you create uh, that's how you create templates now let's say we wanted to create a new template maybe let's create a template for a particular use case let's see um well i think we have do we have a blog post writer okay we don't have a blog post writer so maybe let's start by creating a template for a particular uh, for writing a blog post so the way we would do this is i'm just going to create a new uh, i'm just going to create a new branch over here let's see what are the changes we've made okay so i'm just going to create a new branch over here um and then put create a new template in that branch so let me open up the terminal and in the terminal let me create a branch git checkout minus b blog template okay so now we want to create a new template for creating a blog post so i am going to now go into this folder templates folder and i'm going to create a new folder called blog writer and in the blog writer i need two things i need a system.md prompt and I need a prompt user.md. Okay. Now, uh, to actually prototype this, whenever you're creating any templates or whenever you're setting up prompts for your uh, language models, especially for OpenAI language models, you can go to platform.openai.com. So go to platform.openai.com and log in if you're not logged in already and open up the playground, the, uh, the OpenAI playground. And the benefit here is you can actually go in here and you can uh, select a particular model you can define some settings so let me go into the chat model and here what you can do is you can add a bunch of system prompts here and then you can add a user prompt here and you can see exactly what the chatbot is going to say and you can also configure which model you want to try it with like gpt3 or gpt4 and, and so on so let's add a system prompt here for our prototyping so you are a blog writing assistant you will be given a title of a blog post and uh, and some notes about the contents of the post your job is to write the entire blog post so write the entire blog post all right okay uh, and let's give it some example so let's give it some some more instructions start with an introduction followed by an outline followed by sections of content followed by a conclusion or let's say and end with a conclusion and keep it conversational and avoid getting too technical all right so these are some things that i have found useful for generating blog posts so um that could be the system prompt that could be something that the user doesn't have to write and now from the user all we would want to know is the topic and maybe some notes all right so um let's let's see let's look at an example of this of course this is going to be replaced by a variable so let's say the topic that we want to create for the user um is let's see prompt engineering right so basics of prompt engineering okay so then the notes would be what is prompt engineering how is it useful why is it important i might want to know okay like some getting started with prompting some examples so maybe like one example for writing a blog post let's get very meta on this uh, one example for writing a short video one example for maybe writing a code explainer right and uh, how to learn more all right so this is probably what we want and i'm completely making this up right now on the fly let's see if given this particular um a system uh, system 
message and given this particular set of nodes and let's say we pick GPT 3.5 that is the model that we've been using so far now the maximum length I'm just going to make it a little longer so the number of tokens I want to make maybe get to about 500 tokens or 500 um 500 words essentially and let me just click submit and let's see what it gives us introduction okay have you ever been on a website or an app and uh, pop-up message a prompt appear that's an example of prompt engineering that's not prompt engineering okay so now something has gone wrong with this right uh clearly in this case it's a bit it has messed up a little bit so let's maybe give it prompt engineering for or prompting for large language models yeah let's try that again well actually we might have to just remove this and remove this and submit okay now it's now it's coming up with a better result so often the user will have to experiment with their descriptions etc but here it says that i think we'll have to wait but it's basically defined what prompting is then it says how is it useful and then it is uh, then it says why it is important and then hopefully it's going to give us some examples of prompting so there are several online tools um and some examples so it's going to give you like openai has a blog post on overview of how to write prompts and then let's see how to learn more it probably did not give an actual example of a prompt somewhere uh, so i may want to go back change the description here and then fix things but this is all on the user side but as such i'm actually pretty happy with the, this post so if i just go into a google doc and paste it in here let's see what this post actually says introduction okay what is prompting how is it useful why is it important getting started with prompting some examples uh, open as a blog post well additionally the short videos okay i think it, it misunderstood what i meant by examples in this case it's saying that these are some example resources but otherwise it's fine i guess overall it did a it did an okay job so at this point i'm happy with my prompt so i'm going to grab the system prompt and put it inside system.md that is that and i'm going to grab my user prompt over here and put it inside user.md so that's that and let me just make this topic and let me make this notes all right so i've just given names to both of these variables so with that i've created this uh, i've created this blog writer template let me also go into index.json and add it so here i'm going to go in into index.json and i am going to just go in and add another entry here so the slug or the url for this is going to be blog writer i want this to show up at jobot.dev slash blog writer okay this is json so let's do that let's put in blog writer here um then the title for this is going to be blog writer the description well just provide a topic and some notes and have a high quality well have a have the first draft of your blog post written for you right great that is a description then well i guess we pro we need to provide it an icon url so for now i'm just going to grab one of the existing icon urls let's see uh, cover letter generator i'll just probably use this one i'll use the icon url from cover letter generator for now yep and then let's give it some inputs so here is one input i'm going to give it i am going to give it the input uh, let's see there are two inputs the first input the field is called topic is it called topic yeah topic and it is of the type okay the title for this field is topic and then the type of this is just text so i'm just going to put text here and then finally placeholder and let's say title of your blog post all right or enter the title of your blog post 
that's good that's the first input the second input is notes and the title is notes and the type here is text area is the type which is basically a, a longer text field and then the placeholder here is going to be enter some notes about what the blog covers right and i'm just going to do that and I am going to just create a pull request over here. So added a blog template. And let me just publish this branch over here. So now I am going to go in here and you can see that we say blog template had, had new pushes. So I'm just going to create a pull request. Now this is probably not the best way to create templates, right? The better way would be to add some, like store them in a database in our Superbase database and allow users to create them on the user interface itself which is probably something that we'll do as a next step but uh, for now here we added a block template so added the prompts and included them in the templates folder all right and i'm going to create a pull request over here and we're just quickly going to review what changes we have made here so these are some changes that I believe I made. Yeah, just some changes I made uh, style related changes. I'm going to ignore those for now. But yeah, we've written a system.md prompt. We've written a, a user.md prompt and we have written this uh, template index.json and we fixed one of the other prompts as well. And let's just merge this. So once this is merged, uh, we've set things up in such a way that as soon as the templates get merged to master, they will become available to Jobot. So let me go back here on jobot.dev and let me just reload over here. And you should see. Let's see. Yeah, maybe it requires it requires another deployment, but soon enough, it should start showing up. Um, sometimes the deployment could take maybe a minute or two to set up. Okay. So just like that, you can create a new template. Let me see here. Let me just quickly inspect this to make sure that things are showing up properly. Yep. So we have a blog writer template here. We have an index.json file inside the index.json file. We have a blog writer template. Okay, so yeah, it should show up. It should show up maybe uh, just it'll take maybe a few minutes or so to show up. But that's basically how you create a template, you need a bunch of metadata, you need information about the inputs that the templates has, you need information about uh, you need to create a system prompt and a user prompt and your template is ready. So now that we've understood how templates are created, let's understand how actually we implemented this entire functionality. Okay, so let's try to understand what exactly we did to show these boxes here, uh, then what exactly we did to uh, create this user interface. Okay, so um, I am going to come in into the code base here. So this is the entire code for the entire application. And we made a few changes, we've made what's called we've done a few refactors, which means we've rearranged the code a little bit. So let's take a look at it from the top. So the first thing you might want to understand is okay, what what is the structure of this entire page look like? So inside the Jobot web folder, which contains the Next.js project, we have an SRC pages folder. And inside the pages folder, we have the index.js folder and the index.js folder contains the code that renders this entire page. Okay. And by the way, um, if you want to understand any of this code, one thing I want to mention is we have added, we have created a Visual Studio Code extension for Jobot. So you can go into extensions, you can go into extensions here and you can uh, just search for Jobot. And you can install the Jobot extension from here. And then you will get a you will get Jobot right within your VS code, wherever you are. And you can use this for any project of your choice. So just click on the three dots and select the Jobot. Well, actually, if I zoom out enough, you'll see that it actually shows up right here at the bottom. Uh, I could also maybe move it up. So let me move it up a little bit so that it's right here. It's in the second or third position. Yeah. And now I can open this up. And here, now you have this 
now you have Jobot right within your VS code. So you can ask questions as you are browsing the code. Okay. So what happens here in index.js? Well, for, let me close Jobot for now. So what happens is, well, we simply create this page and in the page we have the title Jobot, the AI that does everything. So that's basically the title over here, right over here, right at the top. Then we have this description and we have a icon. So the icon is the icon that you see here and all of that. And then we have this entire div, which takes up the entire screen. So that is basically the outer box that contains this entire page. And in this first, we render this nav bar. So you can see that we've extracted nav bar into a separate component. So the nav bar is this entire piece over here. And that is a separate component over here. You can see that it is a separate component, which contains a shadow. So that's where it has this slight shadow. Then it contains the Jobot uh, text logo. So we've created a small logo for Jobot, which contains this icon and this text. And then it contains this logout or login link. Now, if you're logged in, then it's going to show logout. But if you're logged out, it's going to show, uh, it's going to show login. And um, I can now just sign in once again, so that I can see that page once again. And yeah, I can sign in and I can have a code sent to my email. Yeah, let's see. Here's the code. And let us post the code and that signs me in. Okay. Now, of course, what does that do? They open the law lo slash logout and slash login pages. That is something that we looked at in the previous tutorial, but that's the nav bar. Then we have this uh, box over here and this input box. So this input box is here. Uh, actually, we should probably move this code above because that conveys. Yeah. So we have something called history. Uh, we'll see where it comes from. But if the message history currently the current message history in the current session is less than or equal to one, which means there's nothing except the system prompt in the message history, then that means the message a conversation has not been started. So if a conversation has not been started, we simply show this box, we, sh we show this title Jobot the AI that does everything. And then we show a bunch of things below it. So you can see this is the code for the title. Okay, this says Jobot the AI that does everything. This is the code for showing the message input. And again, we, you can see that we've extracted it out into a separate reusable component. So that is one of the benefits of using a library like react, you can extract out pieces of uh, user interfaces into a reusable component. So this contains the message input, this is the input box over here. And then this contains a list of templates. So all these templates are actually rendered or displayed. Yeah, there you go. Blog writer is here. So all these templates are shown using this templates component. Okay, so that is in the case where a conversation has not been started. But suppose a conversation has been started, let's say I just ask who are you? In that case, you can see it says I'm Joe board and assistant created by Joe and such and such. In this case, we are not uh, the length of the history is going to be greater than one, right? Apart from the basic system prompt, there's going to be more uh, messages. So in this case, what we have is we have a message history over here. And that is this message history that you're seeing. And then we have a message input over here. And that is a message input that you're seeing here as well. Okay, so here is an example of some JavaScript code. So this is a message history. And this is a message input. So this flow we understand properly already, uh, except that all we've done is we've extracted out the code that was exactly hard coded here in this page, we've extracted them out into separate components. But in any case, let's take quick looks at these. So let's take a quick look at the message history. Now in the message history, what we do is it gets a history and we'll see where the history comes from. Uh, what we do is we simply render a div and inside the div, we from the history, we filter out any messages, any uh, messages that are system messages that have the role system. And then the rest of them, we simply show over here, the rest of them we simply map over and display a message. So again, we have a second helper component called message. So let's open up message over here. And when you open up message in the message, what we are doing is, um, you can see that each message has a avatar or basically a, a just a circle here showing whether it's Joe bot or it's us, it has a author name and it has the actual message. So this image renders that circle that avatar, then uh, we have this yeah, we have this information about the person who has sent the message. So if the role is user, it says you otherwise it says Joe bot. And finally, we are using the react markdown library, the react markdown component from react markdown to render this code and everything properly, right? So um, chat GPT returns messages in the markdown format. And that's where 
we are using the react markdown library from react markdown okay so that is the that is what the message history looks like now this is the common structure of most react and nextjs applications you'll you'll find that most files are smaller than 100 lines of code and what we do is we extract out a bunch of logic and functionality into helper components so i encourage you to browse the code and if you have questions at any point let's say you have a question about this particular piece of content uh, this particular piece of code you can say um explain this code and just enter it and it says that it's a it is a react markdown thing and it, it you know it gives you an example of what it is and then it says that that's going to display things in markdown format so i'll let you read it and figure it out okay so use jobot within um, a vs code to get help with whatever you need uh, so that is a message history let's go back in here let's also check the message input so what does the so the message history gets a history we'll look at where that comes from the message input gets a send messages function a, mess, a function that it can call to send uh, some new messages and then it also gets a sending status okay we'll see where those come from as well so the message input uh, basically what it is is it is just a box and inside the box it is a text area so you can see here that there is a box here at the bottom and you can see it has a border and inside it there is a text area and you can also make it, it we, are, we are using a resizable component so we are using this react text area auto size so again this is an external library that we are using so that as you start as you continue typing it's going to automatically resize the text area and apart from this we have the send button over here as well so the send button what it does essentially is it takes whatever has been typed into the text area so whatever is typed into the text area you can see here that it has the value prompt and on change property e dot set prompt e dot target dot value so whatever is typed into the text area is going to be stored into this variable called prompt okay and then when we have the send button on the send button when clicking the send button we call this function handle send click and this handle send click but a function basically first checks if something has been typed if nothing has been typed then it is going to simply say please enter a message before you send and it's going to end so that's why i've added a return here if something has been typed then it is going to create this message that this message is of the role user and this message has the content prompt uh, which is the prompt that has been provided and it's going to call the send messages helper uh, function so the message that is the function that is passed in as an input it calls that with the new message that has been created and what send messages will do internally and we'll take a look at it is it's going to take the history it's going to add these new messages at the bottom in this case just one new message and it's going to then um, call the open ai api uh, and of course if sending message is successful then we um, then we set the prompt we clear the prompt if sending the message is not successful then we reset the prompt so we set the prompt back okay so that is yeah so that's everything in terms of the input box again a bunch of functionality has been captured into this single component and all it is being given is whether the message is currently sending now the sending variable is used in this fashion let's say uh yes i need some help right this it says wait for my response over here so when it is typing when jobot is responding then you cannot type into the text box so that's how we are using the sending variable i'll i'll let you check the code and figure it out okay so all that is in the case where there's a message going on now let's look at the case where we are going to show the list of templates so what exactly happens in this templates component so here's what happens in the templates component so in our templates component which renders all of these templates so there are nine templates or 10 11 templates uh, at the moment so it renders about 11 templates and the way it works is first it's going to call this function so it has a state variable called templates and what we're doing is we're fetching the templates from the github repository so first it's going to call this function called get templates okay basically what get templates does is uh, it calls this url and from this url it gets the templates in a json format what is this url well if i go to github.com slash jovian hq slash jobot um, you can see that i can open up templates and in the templates folder i can open up this index.json and i can click raw 
Okay, so if I click the, if I just go to GitHub and get the raw URL, so we remember we don't have a database. I mean, we're not using a database right now. We're just using GitHub as our temporary database. Essentially, we'll add this functionality later. But if I just go to the GitHub user content dot com, uh, the the raw the raw, raw file URL, I can just copy that, and I can just in my application, I can just pull this URL, and from that URL, I will get the index dot JSON, which gives me all the information to display all of these templates, right? So that's basically what is what is happening here. So we have this templates base URL raw dot github user content dot com slash Jovin HQ slash Jobot slash main slash templates. And we add to it slash index dot JSON. So we get this full URL over here. And we fetch that. So when we fetch that entire URL, from that we get the full list of templates and we simply convert that into JSON and then we return it. Okay, so this get templates is called in the use effect hook, which means it's basically gets called when the component renders for the first time. And then that's whatever response we get out of that uh, URL, we're going to save in the template state variable. Then inside over here, we have some code. Again, if a particular piece of code doesn't make sense, you can always go in and you can say, like, explain these tailwind classes. And it's going to tell you exactly what these tailwind classes does. MT4 applies a margin and this does that and that does this. So um, yeah, what we do is we take the list of templates, we call dot map, and then we get each template. So we get each entity here from the input. So let's say this one particular template. And that is in that single template is rendered as a list item. And what we do is we create a link. So each of these is a clickable link, you can see, uh, we of course have this have this card. So this card is basically it, you know, it has this um, background effect where it gets a, a small shadow, then uh, it has that image. So here over here, we have this image that we're showing then it has this title that becomes blue. So the template title, it turns blue on hover, whenever we hover over the entire card, it turns blue, then we have this template description. And remember, all of this is coming from the index.json file, which we pulled from GitHub by uh, using the fetch API. And finally, we have a template description. Okay, so we take that for each template, we take the template title template description and the template image and render this card. And we've created a grid so that this flows into two or into one uh, row, depending on the size of the screen. Okay, and all of this is achieved using the grid layout CSS grid layout. And again, if you want to learn a little bit about the CSS grid layout, so you can go in and ask uh, Jobot or look this up online. So teach me a bit about the CSS grid layout. It says it's a powerful me method of creating flexible layouts, it allows you to create a grid of rows and columns and then place content into those columns, you have a grid container that you have to set to display grid, then you have grid items that you can set using grid row and grid column, you can define a bunch of things, right? So and it gives you an example as well. This is just uh, so good. Okay, so now let us go in to a particular template um, and see what happens, right? So what what we do here is now you've understood that we have this templates over here. And each templates, uh, the template simply renders all these cards. And when we click on one of these cards, that opens a new page. So we go into lead code assistant. So that opens a new page slash lead code assistant, uh, where it has a title and it has a bunch of these um, bunch of these input fields for us. Okay, so how does that work? Well, so you can see here that just like we had jobot.dev slash that is an index.js. So the main page is an index.js. Similarly, slash login is in login.js. Similarly, slash logout is in logout.js. Now the trouble with templates is that each template has a different slug or a different URL piece that we have configured. So we can create a file called slug.js and we can put it in these square brackets and then any anything other than the ones that we've provided. So jobot.dev slash anything, let's say xyz hyphen one, two, three, all of that is getting going to come to the single page slug.js. So this way, this is called a route parameter. Um, so this way, it can capture all possible URLs apart from the URLs that have already been defined. Okay, so when we get slash when we open the link jobot.dev slash lead code assistant, that is sent to the file slug.js. So the logic from slug.js is used to actually display information or send data back to the browser. So how does that work? Well, uh, so the way the template page works is um, it has a head. So it has a title. So you can see here the title of the page is lead code assistant. 
So that is coming from the template. Where does the template come from? Well, the template comes from this helper function. So in Next.js, again, this is some more Next.js terminology. Um, and you can also again check this on Jobot. There is something called get server side props, which means before you actually display anything on the browser, do you want to fetch some data from somewhere? Whenever you want to fetch some data from somewhere before actually displaying it on the browser, that or before sending anything to the browser even, that is where you can define this function get server side props in a Next.js page. So this has to be done inside a file which is inside the pages folder. And here what we're doing is, uh, it gets a context and from the context we can actually get the slug. So we can get this value lead code assistant from here and, and we can say get template context.params.slug. So we are saying get us the template, uh, get us the details for the template which has the slug lead code assistant. And we are doing this using this get template function. What get template does essentially is uh, it takes the slug which is lead code assistant and from it first gets a list of all the templates irrespective of the slug. And then from those set of templates, it finds the template matching. So it gets this index.json file. And then from this index.json file, it finds the matching template. So it, it just gets back this particular piece of information. It throws away the rest. So that is going to be used to render the title of the page and things like that. Then uh, since we know the templates, uh, since we know the slug, so we know that it's lead code hyphen assistant, uh, we can click on lead code hyphen assistant. And over here, we have the two files system.md and user.md. So you can open system.md and click on raw. So there is a way for us to actually construct this URL slash jovinhq slash jobot slash main slash template slash lead code assistant slash system.md. So that URL is constructed here in get system prompt where we take the base template URL, we add the slug to it and then we um, add the file slash system.md. And similarly, we construct a URL for the user.md raw JSON file. And we call up, call all of these and basically what we do is inside the inside this object template dot uh, inside this object that was retrieved for the particular template we add in a couple of things we add in a system prompt and we add in a user prompt okay so all of this is to say that before we render anything before we even return anything on the page the template page already has all the data about the template now ideally again this should be fetched from a database so that is the next enhancement we'll make but for now we're just uh, fetching this from um github so we're just building things step by step okay now once we have that template using that template we render the page title we render the page description and then um we have the nav bar so the nav bar is as is there's no change here um then what we do is we check for that particular template if the length of the history is one which means that by so far again uh, there is nothing in the chat history and we'll take a look at where history comes from. But so far there is nothing in the chat history except the most basic system prompt which is like your name is Jobot such and such. In that case we render the template, we render this particular uh, set of inputs. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if a conversation has been started then we simply show the message thread, right? So if I go in here and if I say print hello world in JavaScript, let's say this is the question that I'm trying to solve and I put in the code hello world and then I put in the programming language uh, JavaScript and I click start conversation. Once I've started the conversation then we go into this mode. Okay then we go into this mode where we have the message history and we have the message input so it's not very different from what we have on the main page anyway. Right. Um, so on the other hand let us first try to get an understanding of how this particular piece of user interface is rendered. So let me go into the file template. So let me close other tabs. Let me open the file template. And you can see in template.js, what we get is uh, we get the template that contains information about what is its title, description, etc. And we get a function to send messages. So what we do essentially is we first render the template title as an H1. You can see here. Below it, we render the template description. You can see this is the template description. And below it, we get the list of inputs inside the template. So you, you can see here that each template has a bunch of inputs. So this template has this input and uh, for this input, there is a each each input. So it has three inputs and the first input is called question. The second is called student code. The third is called language. So it gets it renders for it goes it maps over each input. It iterates over the inputs and it renders this template input component. OK, and then below it, it renders a start conversation button. Now, how does this template input component work? Well, let me open up template input.js. 
So the template input gets all of this information. So it gets the field, title, type, placeholder, options, whatever, it, whatever is there, right? All of that. Uh, it also gets the value and an on change handler. So that is used to keep track of the value inside the input. Uh, but what it does is it first checks the type and it checks if the type is text area or if the type type is code, then it renders some, uh, then it renders a text area. You can see here it is going to uh, display a text area with a label above it. The label comes from the title. So in this case, for example, uh, the type is text area for question. The type is text area. You can see. So it renders this text area where you can just type a question. So print hello world in Python, right? On the other hand, uh, for the second thing, which is the student code, the type is code. And if it is that since the type is code, it also renders a text area. Uh, so both for the text area type and the code type, it renders a text area, uh, a div. However, for the code type, it is simply going to use a monospace font, which means that uh, if I type here, like print hello world, you can see that this looks like the kind of uh, font that is used in code editors, right? So on this, this on the other hand is normal textual font. So that way you can just do an if else on in this case, we're doing a switch case statement. Uh, we render a text area for text area and code. If the type is select, then we render a drop down. So the select type is used over here. Uh, no, the select type is used, let's say over here, you can see difficulty level. And these options come from the options that are specified. So if I go into the index.json and I check the quiz master. So for the quiz master, you can see that for the difficulty level, we've set type select and we've set options, easy, medium, hard, very hard. So in our code, what we are basically doing is looking at the type that comes in from the JSON. If the type is select, then we uh, render a select and then we render a bunch of options apart from a default option that says select an option. Okay. And finally, if the type is something other, like it's plain text or date or something like that, then in that case, we simply render an input of that given type. So this could work for checkbox. This could work for date type, etc. Okay. So essentially what we've done is we've translated this, this data about a particular template that comes from the index.json that is, that is from the GitHub repository. But of course it could also come from a database. We've taken that and we've translated that into a user interface like this using this template input and using this template component. Okay. So on the template page, we render this template component, which contains this user interface. Now what happens is, uh, as you make changes here, uh, to each to either of these, all of the, all of that gets tracked in this input data. Okay. So we get, we have this input data, uh, essentially this is the data that has been entered by the user. And then what we do is we create a couple of filled messages. So we take the system prompt, the system prompt that has been specified for that template. And remember the system prompt is already inserted into the template. Um, so our template comes with the system prompt. So we take the system prompt and we call this fill template function. Similarly, we take the user prompt and we call this fill template function. What does fill template do? Well, it takes the prompt, it takes some input data. So let's say I've entered here, the topic is machine learning. Yeah, let's say I've entered here, the topic is machine learning. And the difficulty level is hard. So it takes this input data, machine learning and hard, and then it fills that input data into the template, which is, this is quiz master, right? So inside quiz master, let's see. Yeah. So quiz master, let's, let's just identify the system prompt for quiz master. Yeah. So the, the user prompt for quiz master. So it's simply going to put the topic here. It's going to put the difficulty here. So we have just this helper function that does that. It takes the inputs that have been entered, puts them into the prompt. Apart from that, of course, it has the system prompt as well. So, so it creates one message called uh, with the role system and it creates one message with the role user. And then it takes both of these and on these upon clicking uh, the start conversation method or uh, start conversation button, we send these messages. Okay. The send messages function, we'll take a look at it soon, but that is going to take these. It's going to con uh, add them to the ex existing history uh, for this session. And it's going to start a conversation with Jobot. So now you can see that we're uh, topic machine learning. We're getting this question. I think we may want to fix the rendering a little bit because it seems like um, all the, all the options are showing up in a single, in a single line. So we may need to fix that, which we will. So yeah, but let's see here. So it says 
C and that option is not correct. It's still giving away the correct answer. So we may still need to tweak the prompt a little bit. Uh, GPT 3.5 especially is not very good at working with um, system prompts, but GPT-4 is better. And we hope to f soon launch GPT-4 on Jobot. It's just that it's a bit slow and it's a bit um, expensive for free usage. So we may launch a paid tier. Let us know if you'd like to try that. But that is how what we've done is we've taken prompt engineering and we've templatized it and we've created a sort of a, um, we've created a sort of app essentially or a skill that Jobot has using this template. Okay. Okay, now the last thing I want to mention is where are these, where is this history and where is this send messages coming from? Well, all of that is coming from this helper hook called use OpenAI messages. So inside your page or inside any component, you can call use ideally once per page, you can call use OpenAI messages. And what it does is it wraps a bunch of functionality inside it. So it, it stores a history inside it and it stores a sending status inside it. It also stores the user information inside it. So it fetches all this information and then it creates this send messages function, which is going to first check if the user is present, then it is going to then uh, take the old history into the old history. It's going to create, add in the new messages that were passed and then it's going to set the history. Then it's going to send a request to OpenAI. Again, we've extracted out a helper uh, function called post OpenAI messages that is going to actually make the actual request. And then it's going to check the response. And if the response is fine, then it is going to stream the message. So once again, we've uh, created a helper function called stream OpenAI response, which can then take the response. And each time the message gets updated, it's going to add that to the history. And uh, that history is then going to be available to our other components and so on. Okay. And it's also going to send set the sending status. So this is a hook. Basically what we're doing is we're taking a bunch of business logic, a bunch of functionality and encapsulating it within this use OpenAI messages. Uh, helper function. Why are we doing that? Because we need it in index.js. So you can see that in index.js, we need use OpenAI messages and we need it in slug.js. So you can see that we need it here as well. So the benefit is of extracting out this piece of code is that now we can reuse it without having to re retype it from scratch in both of these pages. Okay. So again, I'll, I'll let you learn more about creating custom hooks in JavaScript or in uh, react, but you can also go and ask uh, Joe Bart. So explain why and how to create custom hooks in react with a simple example. Okay. So let's see what Joe Bart says. Custom hooks are a useful way to reuse stateful logic in react. We can create a bunch of functional. Now one trouble is we cannot scroll up when this is going on. Let me see if I can just hold this and show you. No, I think we'll have to let it finish. But when we, when we do have a chance to uh, let it finish, we can check it out. Yeah. So it says that, uh, custom hooks are a way to reuse stateful logic. We can create a custom hook by extracting some functionality in, from a component into a separate function. Here is an example. So use countdown timer. This is an example of a custom hook. And, uh, of course, if, if this code itself doesn't make sense, you can come in here, you can come on to Jobot, go into code explainer and paste this code here. And this is react and it's going to then explain this to you. Right. Uh, but yeah, so then you can see how it is used in this particular component and it is, it has a bunch of explanation about it as well and so on. So you have all the resources at your disposal. The way you should look at this is try to get a high level idea and then whatever doesn't make sense, go ahead and go back and ask Jobot, go back and ask chat GPT. All right. You can use the VS code extension or you can use uh, Jobot itself. All right. So that is pretty much everything we've done. Um, maybe there's a little more code here and there, but no, this is pretty much it. So the utils.openai.js function, uh, JS uh, code base contains everything that, um, that you need to work with OpenAI. Then we have added this network slash index.js. This contains a bunch of functions to actually get the templates. Uh, we will replace these to actually pick up templates from the database in before the next lesson. Then we have these uh, components over here. Okay. Uh, these are all the components that we've already looked at. So we have the nav bar, we have a message history, message input, a message itself. So just a bunch of components. So all of this together is again, maybe like four or 500 lines of code. Uh, but with that, that has given us some pretty good functionality over here. Now, uh, the next thing I want to mention is we have also added some documentation 
So obviously at this point, we're getting to a place where you don't necessarily need to implement everything by yourself. Rather, what you can do is you can either contribute to Jobot um, and we'd love contributions or you can just build, uh, you can use this as a starting point and build something of your own. And for that, we've added a bunch of documentation here. So if you just scroll down on the GitHub page and you see um, there's information about what Jobot is, there's information about the abilities we've given it so far. I think we should probably take this since we've given it a few skills now. Um, next thing, probably an interesting thing to add would be Whisper. I'm really excited about trying this with the mock interview bot so that you can actually have uh, with speech and hearing, you can actually have a proper mock interview uh, along with the right pre-configured prompt so that it makes sense. And then we look at memory, creativity, vision as well. Uh, we have created a web application so far. We'll work on creating a REST API as well. Um, we've already created a VS Code extension and a WhatsApp bot too. Uh, I'll drop links to both of them in the chat. So I believe the WhatsApp bot is at j uh, jvn.io slash jobot WhatsApp. So you can chat with jobot on WhatsApp. And the VS Code extension is at jvn.io slash jobot VS Code. So you can chat with jobot on VS Code as well. Okay. Yeah. So, and the idea is that all the skills that we create will be available from all of these various interfaces as well. Okay. Now, um, of course, we are also going to open up a REST API so that you as a developer will be able to then build on top of Jobot. So you can build an application like a, your own Android or iOS app or something using Jobot's REST API. So it's going to get pretty interesting from there. Uh, now, the key thing that I want to point out to you today is um, one, the different ways in which you can contribute. So let's say you're excited about this. Uh, you're into the third episode. You're actually feeling excited about this. So you can create, you can report bugs or you can uh, suggest features by creating an issue. So just go into slash issues and you can do that. Then you can also open up a pull request. So you can go in and create a pull request. I think there was a pull request created by Harry. Um, and so I'm going to take a look at that. Thanks, Harry, for creating that pull request. Then I have, let's see over here. What else do we have? Yeah. Uh, in case you want to show your love for the repository, please go ahead and start it. You can go in here and click star just like that. And if enough people start it, hopefully other people will also start seeing it in their feeds. And if you have a suggestion, then you can post a discussion. I think discussions are not open right now, but you can go on the course page and post a discussion. So you can go to how to build an AI.com and you can post a discussion here. So just go in here and post a discussion like that. Let me fix that right now. So let me just go in and edit this right away. Yeah. So I'm going to go in here and change the link for discussions. Let's see like that. And let's also take this off. So since we are done with the skills section, let us take that off as well. And let us commit those changes. Fix discussions link and tick off skills. Okay. And with that, we are going to be, yeah, we're going to have the right URL. So yeah, you can start a discussion over here like that. And then in case you actually want to deploy your own copy of Jobot or you want to develop it locally, follow these steps. So first you want to fork this repository. So there's a fork button here at the top. You need to fork this repository. Uh, once you fork the repository, then you need to sign up on openai.com and generate an openai key. You need to sign up on Superbase and set up a new project. Then you need to sign up on Vercel and deploy Jobot's Next.js application. So again, what you need to do is you need to just import the project into Vercel, select Jobot web. This is what we have done in the first lesson. So you should first and second lesson. So you should be follow, able to follow along. And finally, you need to provide your own environment variables, the next public Superbase URL, the next public Anon key and the OpenAI API key. So if you provide these three credentials on Vercel, then your own copy of Jobot is going to get deployed. And you, if you want, you can also then connect a custom domain to it and you can build on top of it. It's all open source. We're giving this all away uh, completely for free. Feel free to uh, use it in whatever way you want. And after you've deployed your own copy of Jobot, let's say you want to make some changes to it. Then what you might want to do is then uh, either clone the repository on your computer or open it online using GitHub code spaces. I would recommend GitHub code spaces. All of this is being done with free resources. So you can do that. 
And if you're developing locally, then make sure to install Node.js and VS Code. Again, that is why I recommend GitHub Code Spaces. It has everything installed already. Then open up the repository on VS Code, head into the Jobot web folder, npm install, install the libraries, run the development server, and you should now be able to open up the application in a new browser tab and interact with it. Then you create a file .env.local inside the Jobot web folder, just like we have in our code space over here. See, I have this file .env.local. This contains my credentials. And inside this folder, you need to set your next public superbase URL, next public anon key, the same things that you set here. So set those exact things over here. Then make any desired code changes, change the logo, maybe change the templates, maybe change uh, some of the functionality, do whatever you want. And uh, your development uh, server should refresh automatically. Once you've tested it, you can stage, commit and push those changes back to your GitHub repository. And that way your deployment on Vercel will get, uh, you'll get updated. Okay, so feel free to build on top of this. <clears throat> now, if you would like to contribute a change back to this particular original repository, then you can create what's called a pull request from your fork. So you can create a pull request and you can suggest a change just like Harry has done over here. So like that, you can see that Harry has created, uh, created a pull request and he wants to merge it back into our main folder. So you can create a pull request like that and we will then review it. And once and we feel, if we feel that that's a good addition, uh, do include a proper description, maybe before a pull request, it would also make sense to, uh, if it's a small thing, yes, but if, if it's a longer, larger change, you could also maybe first post an issue before you create a pull request. And then that's it. And uh, of course, our detailed walkthrough of the entire code base and is, was just done, but is also part of the course, how to build an AI.com. So that's basically, a bunch of instructions for you to just build on top of Jobot. Maybe just contribute a template. I think the easiest thing you can do is add a new template. So if you find some interesting use case that you would like to uh, do build with or give to Jobot, then just go create a fork, add a new template, maybe just um, add a folder, add it into index.json, add a system prompt, as a add a user prompt, keep some variables inside it, and then uh, create a pull request and we'll try to merge it. Okay. Soon enough though, we are going to move the templates into the Superbase database so that you will be able to create templates just by signing in on jobot.dev and yeah, just by signing in here and creating templates. Okay. So that's going to come soon too, but I believe that's it for today. So today we looked at giving Jobot skills. I think Jobot has a bunch of useful skills now. And we'll see where this goes. We'll try to uh, we'll try to create a way for everyone to submit skills, and we'll try to then feature some of the top skills. And of course, we can do a lot more here. We can now uh, memory would be a good next step for us to add uh, after we've allowed people to create their own skills. Just being able to keep track of conversations right now. As soon as you reload a page, the conversation history is gone. So that is something that we may want to keep track of. That's where again we can use Superbase to keep track of the memory. Hearing and speech are two things that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, but of course, on the other hand, we should also build out some REST APIs so that we can, you can see how Jobot comes onto WhatsApp, how Jobot comes onto VS Code, how Jobot can come onto Discord, Slack, and all those places. So yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna have a bunch of other pretty exciting stuff coming up soon. And feel free to contribute in whatever way you feel like. At the very least, if if you have a question about something, feel free to ask a question and we'll try to answer that for you. But I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Thanks for sticking with this and do share the course page link with your friends or colleagues. If you find anyone who might be interested in this kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, we will with that. I think we'll close for today. And I just want to mention once again that uh, we're doing all of this. We are not training our own models. Rather, we're using existing language models because as the parameters have become larger, these language models have a lot of new properties, a lot of new abilities have emerged within these language models. And for us to be able to make use of all these properties, we, one, we have to use these language models, larger ones, but second, we have to also come up with the right prompts, right? So the prompt engineering is the programming in the world of language models. So for you to be able to do something really advanced or something really powerful, like all of these, we have to come up with the right prompts. And that's where uh, not everybody can sit or and write their prompts or copy paste them from somewhere. That is where it really helps for us to then 
take those prompts and create a build a user interface on top of those prompts and hide the implementation details from casual users, people who just want to get a mock interview and not worry about what are all the details of the prompts internally. So we're going to hide that and build this abstraction layer on top of it. And that could potentially like you can imagine that this can potentially become a sort of an AI app store of sorts, where you have hundreds of use cases for which we have all these interfaces and people can come in and have uh, and, and use all of these abilities without needing to know the internal implementation details. Okay. So that's what this is about. So what to do next? Well, uh, start chatting with Jobot because that's the best way to just learn more. Uh, see if the prompts make sense. See if there are some changes we need to make to the prompts. See if there are any typos anywhere. Um, run the code yourself. At the very least, deploy your own copy on Vercel. It's free. Uh, develop your uh, and try developing, try change, try changing the UI, try changing a logo or something. Just play with it. Make small changes to it. Learn whatever prerequisites you need to learn. Just try to fill in your gaps. Again, we've shared links to uh, resources for learning them in the first couple of lessons. So do check those out as well. And finally, participate in discussions. That's the most important thing. If you're excited about this, if you find this interesting, just ask us questions about it and um, we would love to help you out. And if you if you just want to help out, but not sure where not sure where you can start again, just reach out to us and we will point you in the right direction. OK, so that's everything for today. Uh, this was episode three. Jobot learns new tricks and you can head over to jobot.dev right now and you can try out all of these new tricks and we will be back with another episode. Uh, hopefully one that allows you to start creating your, your own skills without having to go through the pull request process just by logging in on jobot.dev. And then of course, from there, we have a bunch of interesting things planned for you as well. So that was uh, how to build an AI, the Chronicles of Jobot. Thank you for joining and I will see you next time. Goodbye.